Hi, this is Stephen from Owner Disso, and today I'm going to be taking a look at uh, Dell's new XPS 15 2 and one Now what sets uh, this apart is its use of the new KB Lake G processor. Now these have an Intel quad-core uh, similar to the i7-7700HQ and AMD Vega MGL graphics on the same die. The idea being that it takes up less space, uh, would allow uh, larger batteries and uh, you know thinner designs with larger coolers. So we have a, a nice large 75 watt hour battery, three heat pipes, two fans, which are next to each other. But when you compare it to the Yoga 720 with the uh, GTX 1050, you will see that it seems to use up more space. The Yoga 720 even allows you to upgrade the RAM, whilst there are no visible RAM slots on the XPS 15. Now these two laptops are very similar in specs, so I will be comparing them uh, in my benchmarks. The 75 watt hour battery does give it good battery life, at just short of 10 hours. It's very close to the Surface Book 2 and 3 hours longer than the Yoga 720. There are 4 current SKUs to choose from, maxing out at 16GB of uh, RAM, 2400MHz and a paltry 256GB SSD and a 4K display for $2200. That has the i7-8705G CPU with a base clock of 3.1GHz boosting up to 4.1. The $1,300 base model only has 128GB of SSD storage, which is ridiculously small. Now my $1,500 one here has 8GB of RAM and a 256GB SSD and I was constantly battling to free up space. Mine also has the slightly lower clocked i5-8305G which runs at 300MHz slower than the i7. Now should you pony up the extra cash for the 4K screen? Well, I don't think so really because you know I went to Best Buy and I saw it and it didn't look that much different to the 1080p. The 1080p is crisp and clear and the colours pop out on it. They stand out and it's exceptional. Colour accuracy is also very good. Slightly behind the 4K Yoga 720, making it good for photo work. Now compared to the Yoga though, it is much brighter. Even at 25% brightness, it is the same as the Yoga at 75%. And indeed, even with the sun shining on it, the display is, is very visible. Now indoors it is vibrant, especially compared to the ASUS ZenBook Flip 14. Now backlight bleed is also non-existent. And it's not that just, uh, it's not just much bigger than the 14 inch ASUS to be honest, but it's not as portable as it does weigh one pound more and its thickness is comparable to both the Flip 14 and the HP NV360. Now what I don't understand is that despite the thickness being the same as uh, similar uh, competing 2-in-1 machines, Dell decided to use a maglev keyboard where there's no membrane, it just uses magnets. They use this to make, uh, you know, supposedly to slim it down and, and make it as slim as possible, but in doing so, the keyboard takes some getting used to. The keys have a very short distance of travel, and although they make a clicking sound, I can see that touch typists may not like it. Key spacing is good, but you'll notice that the arrow keys are very small. The keys are backlit with three levels of brightness. I do like that you don't have to press the FN key to change the brightness or the speaker volume. But it is strange though that there's no volume rocker on the side as the, you know that is useful in tablet mode. On the right hand side you have uh, two USB-C 3.1 ports with PowerShare and DisplayPort, a combo headphone mic jack and a Noble Lock. On the left hand side you have two Thunderbolt 3 ports with PowerShare and DisplayPort. The good news is that you have four PCI Express lanes to, uh, to maximize the bandwidth. Now note that the, pit, uh, the DC in port is recommended in just one of those ports. Otherwise, you get a warning that uh, your battery will drain. The power brick is 130 watts, uh, which is more than enough to power the, the maximum of 88 watts that I saw pull from the wall. Now, to supplement the meager storage, you do get a micro SD card slot. And I wish this slot uh, was actually a UHD 2 SD slot, so at least you could uh, get a decent read, read and write speeds. Now, finally, you have a battery level indicator. The webcam is uh, positioned at the bottom of the display, so if you uh, do a lot of Skype chats, uh, this might not be ideal for you. The palm rests are made of carbon fiber and feel nice with a slight rubbery feel to them, but they do show the oil residue from your hands. The power button also serves as a fingerprint reader and it works very well. The boot up time is uh, from the Toshiba NVMe uh, PCI Express SSD is good, but not the fastest I have seen at about 30 seconds. I measured 314 megabytes per second write and 2854 megabytes per second read speeds. Now Dell uses the killer 1435 Wi-Fi card and I have had uh, mixed uh, performance issues with that in the past but to be honest it worked very well. The two speakers fire from the bottom and produce about 77 decibels of noise. They don't get blocked in tablet mode 
either by the screen or by your hands. The XPS 15 uh, is a two-in-one with pen support, so it can lay lie flat, go in tent mode for presentations, or you can use it in tablet mode to sketch or write notes. At 4.6 pounds or two kilos, it's too heavy to use as a regular tablet, but on a desk, it works great. It uses a Wacom AES pen, which uh, you have to buy separately. Here, you, I use the bamboo ink pen, and it is, uh, works very well, very responsive, and palm rejection works well. The pen can also be used in professional applications like ZBrush, choosing menu selections, and sculpting works really well with the pen. The CPU handles the program well, giving a multi-thread score of uh, 278%. But how does it handle uh, professional music applications? Well, I used uh, Tractor, a music mixing application, and measuring the performance using Latency Mon, and you can hear that the sound does pop and crackle. And indeed, it has difficulty handling real-time audio. Its uh, interrupt process latency is about 2140, and really you want it to be a max of 1000. A couple of drivers do show a higher than ideal uh, execution time, so disabling uh, these uh, should help. Now, one of my viewers said it really struggled using Adobe Pro in 4K. Now, 4K is tough on any system, so how did it fare at 1080p? Putting in footage or text you know, was smooth, but I find that it did uh, make playback in the review screen very choppy. Rendering speeds were fine though. It was about 5% slower than the uh, stock clocked i7-7820HK. Using the GPU, uh, it did slash the rendering times, but nowhere near that uh, that you'd see in the GTX 1060. Build quality is excellent. It's made out of aluminium and the hinges are nice and stiff. The screen doesn't slide down when you uh, press it, nor does it bounce down as much as the Flip 14 when you carry it. The panel is also nice and stiff with little to no flex. Now the air intake is from some venting underneath and is blown out near the hinge. At load, you can clearly see the exhaust heat in this thermal video, measuring at about 42 degrees Celsius. The AWSD key area also gets very hot at 40 degrees, but the palm rest remains nice and cool. And underneath it gets about 38 degrees, which is definitely noticeable. Even when just browsing the web, it gets quite toasty. It's supposed to have uh, this gore insulation to help uh, you know, keep it cool, um, but unfortunately it doesn't seem to work. At idle, the fans are silent, and at load, it is not bad at 38 decibels. Now the BIOS does have an option to maximize performance and, uh, and fans, but they actually made no difference at all. Looking at non-gaming temperatures, the CPU averaged 94 degrees Celsius, which is crazy. Surprisingly, it did not throttle. It averaged nearly 3,400 megahertz and turboed up to just short of the advertised 3.8 gigahertz. On average, at load, it pulled an average of 40 watts, which is about the same as the i7-7700HQ. Now, on a positive note, undervolting brings these temperatures down by 15 degrees. When you do gaming, the CPU still gets quite hot, averaging at 89 degrees, but the GPU was nice and cool at 65. Again, undervolting the CPU really helps bring its temperature down. You can see that the average uh, CPU frequency is less when gaming, as is the power usage, uh, because now the power has to go to the GPU. And uh, that uses around about 46 watts. In Cinebench, you can see that the uh, i5-8305G performs just below the i7-7700HQ. I suspect the i7 model will close that gap. But running my long handbrake encode, test the, uh, the XPS 15 shaves off two minutes compared to the Yoga 720, which is great. More surprising was the time it took to convert 50 photos to a video slideshow using Adobe Lightroom. It blew the i7-7600HQ out of the water. Testing the system using PC Mark 08 with its curative test, we see a much improved score versus the Yoga 720, showing that it is a more capable machine. Now, gaming on it is good. The screen quality and the thin bezels make it enjoyable, and performance is actually better than the GTX 1050 in the Yoga 720. Not as good as a 1050 Ti, but certainly good for 1080p gaming at medium to high settings. Doom Ultra Settings sees an average of 55 FPS, just 10% behind the 1050 Ti. Far Cry 5 plays very well at normal settings, but even at ultra settings you get, a, get above 30 FPS. In PUBG, high settings averages 42 FPS, and even ultra settings averages 31. To get near the GTX 1060 level, you really need to drop down to 720p. TimeSpy shows how the Vega MGL graphics splits the GTX 1050 and the 1050 Ti. Not bad at all. In Rainbow Six Siege, uh, the Vega graphics worked very well. Even better than the 1050 Ti, which was surprising. Over 100 FPS even at ultra settings. 
in router, the Tomb Raider high settings seems to be the best. Although you can get by with very high, and at, at high settings you get 45 FPS, which matches the 1050 Ti at max settings. Again, it beats out the GTX 1050. Now finally in Battlefield 1, it beats the GTX 1050 using ultra settings, but just drops back uh, in a little bit at medium. Still, we get close to 60 FPS, which is great, and the game is very playable. So to conclude, the XPS 15 2-in-1 is a viable alternative to Lenovo's Yoga 720 or 730, albeit it's more expensive and less upgradable. You do get a more powerful CPU and GPU, so that may be worthwhile for you. Although it's not suitable for real-time music production and even video editing, it may not be ideal. Now for people making use of the pen, it works great, but there are less expensive options out there. And you do lose the USB-A ports, and you have to deal with this uh, dongle. Battery life is solid though, and it uh, also looks great. So, you know, as a business laptop, it will serve you well. Thank you for watching. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.